Queridos irmãos e todos aqueles que nos assistem neste momento, Dear brothers and all of you who are watching us at this moment, dear friends, it is a great satisfaction to be with you here once again. Today we are beginning volume 2 of this new daily food whose main subject is the ministers of the new covenant. The title of volume 2 is Beholding God. So today we'll be seeing week 1. Week 1 has a title The Captive and the Good Fragrance of Christ. These are two very remarkable titles which characterize the ministry of the New Covenant. What we are having here is a tutorial. So I hope that all of you may read the daily food and read all the verses and the, the, get to the details. Because it's a tutorial, our time is limited. We are not entering into all the details. We'll leave it detailed reading for each one of you, okay? And you also must read the verses. Today we just want to guide you through this study, pointing out the main subjects, the points to which you should give attention to, so that you can draw as much profit as possible, and also to help those who will be ministering the Word on Friday night or Sunday night, especially that now that we are in the situation of social isolation and the church meetings are canceled, so we'll have to do everything online, on the internet, but still we feel that all those of you who minister the Word must labor in the Word to supply the church. So what we are presenting today are some guidelines for you to enjoy the most of the reading this week, to present the main points to the saints, and also to draw the main points to your life. In reading today, in the study today, I'd like to uh, point out some main points. We'll not mention the days in the whole reading this week, the main points. First, we are close to the end of time. There's no way to deny it. Second, what God wants of you and me. Third, Satan has a plan. What is his plan today? Number four, in this plan of God, what does he want to do? So we'll be seeing today the meaning of two important words. The reading of 2 Corinthians chapter 2, the meaning of the word triumph. Let me read the verse for you here. 2 Corinthians 2.14, here says, Now thanks be to God, who will always lead us in triumph in Christ, and through us diffuse the fragrance of his knowledge in every place. So what does it mean, triumph, here? There's a very deep meaning here. And also we'll be seeing the meaning of fragrance. Here it says, that Through us diffuses the fragrance of his knowledge. For we are to God a fragrance of Christ. The title is The Captive and the Fragrance of Christ. Captive is related to triumph. So we are captive of Christ, so we are the fragrance of Christ. These are the main points. It's a general outline. Now let us get into some of the details. First off, let us see God's speaking. God's speaking and the traps Satan put for us. We really are living today the end of times. There's no way to deny it. And God is working in us. What does He want to do in us today? What He does to us is to speak to us. We have abundance of the Word in the church, so He wants to speak to us. And His Word, it's not a Word that comes back empty. He speaks to us, but He has a goal. When He speaks, 
He wants our transformation. He wants to take us to maturity. For what? To prepare us for the coming of the Lord. Good, and we have a book. Are you prepared for the end of times? Well, the end of times is coming, and we need to be ready for His coming. When he speaks to us today to make haste our growth in life, our maturing, is to prepare us for His coming. Then you may ask, what God wants from me? He wants me to do something for Him. He wants me to do a work for Him. As servants of God, yes. He expects that we do something for Him. That we do the work for Him. To serve Him. But I'd like to say to you that the main, His main goal is He wants you. He wants me. We need to emphasize that for others and also apply it to ourselves. What God wants is you and me. He cares with our person. Not much of what we do. You may do a lot. In Matthew 7, not everyone who, who, who calls me Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heavens, but the one who does the will of my Father, who's in heavens. And we say on that day, Lord, but we did many miracles in your name, we cast out demons, we prophesied in your name. The Lord will say to them, Truly, truly, I say to you that I do not know you. This verse shows that, yes, it is important to do things for God, but most importantly than doing things for God, it is God wants you and me. God wants each one of us. Let us see now to warn all of us so that we can be watchful and prepared. Let us see a little bit about the plan that Satan has. Let us read uh, Revelation 12.12. 12. If you want to follow me, the, the, the verse is on the screen. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea, for the devil has come down to you, having great wrath, because he knows that he has a short time. This verse applies to the great tribulation. This verse comes after the rapture of the man-child in Revelation 12. So what's happening here, it is that Satan, and the man-child the man is caught up, Satan is cast down to earth, and then there is a woe, woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea, for the devil has come down to you, having great wrath. And then there is a sentence, because he knows that it, he has a short time. His time is coming. Satan knows that he has a short time. He's not happy. So he's planning something against you and me, against the church. So let us read 2 Corinthians 2, 11. There it says, uh, For Satan, lest Satan should take advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. He's plotting something, so we should not live as nothing is happening. He has some devices against us. We have to be careful not for him not to take advantage of us. You know what is the, the goal of his traps and his devices? It is to neutralize you. Maybe he won't kill you, but he will neutralize you. I watched once live at the Iguaçu Falls. I was there with my family. And I saw, many times I saw that in documentaries. A fight between a wasp and a spider, a big wasp and the tarantula. And then the wasp gains, but sometimes the, the, the tarantula can kill the wasp. What does it do? It injects poison in the spider, which will not kill it, but makes it numb. And then the wasp lays eggs, hundreds of eggs pop, and then the small larvae eat the spider. What I'd like to say is this, 
when the wasp gets the, the, the poison and the spider, it neutralizes the spider, making it, making it unuseful. It's not dead. Satan does not literally kill us, but wants to neutralize us. To neutralize everything that God gave us and that what God wants to do in us. So let us read Second Thessalonians 2 7. We'll be presented according to the reading of the daily food. Two things that Satan is doing to us. His plan. He wants to propagate iniquity first. He wants to propagate iniquity. Second Thessalonians. Chapter 2, verse 7. For the mystery of lawlessness is already to, at work. Only he, he who now restrains will do so until he's taken out of the way. So what is lawlessness here? It is removal of all the references and limits. So this is what's happening today. Today there's no more reference, there's no more limit. Everything is legal. Listen, what is a taboo in the past is no longer. You can do anything morally, sexually, in the spouse, in marriage life, anything. What Satan wants to do is to remove all the references and limits. Satan wants to remove God from the vocabulary, take out his word. The people have no more fear of God. They believe in, in technology, in trade, in their businesses, in their entrepreneurs, in the world economy, in medicine. Look at what's happening today with this pandemics of the coronavirus, COVID-19. God moved a finger and the whole human society with the whole system collapsed. But Satan would precisely do that, removing all the reference of God and His Word. But within the church, what do we have? We have the prophetic word. And the prophetic word gives us a direction. That is why, saints, we need to pay attention. We have the fundamental word, the basic word of the truths of the gospel. We need to study them and know them. But also, it is very much important to know the prophetic word, the word that gives us direction to our day-to-day for us to get to our goal, which is the kingdom. Satan wants to do what? He wants to, to make us to be indifferent to the word, and not appreciate the word. So, Matthew 24, 12. Matthew 24, 12. Speaks of the propagation of this iniquity. And because lawlessness will abound, the love of many will grow cold. This abounding, I compare it with the multiplication of a virus in the pandemics. The virus began in China and World War Wuhan. Today it's spread out all over the world through contagion, trans transmission. It spreads quickly as never before. Someone contaminated one, three, and nine, and so on. More than two million people contaminated. Nearly 300,000 deaths all over the world. But this virus of iniquity is worse. It, it was already a pandemic, saturated the whole world. What happened? What is a symptom? Is that the love will grow cold. So the question is, what are you for Satan? And in the verse we read, Satan is filled with great wrath, knowing that he has a short time with you. Satan thinks he has a lot of time with him, or Satan is worried. With him acting, I have a short time. Short time. So this is very important. So the first thing that Satan is doing in his plan against us is to spread iniquity. Second, to make you and I not to use our spirit. So First John 2.18 says, uh, Little children, it is the last hour, as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming. Even now many Antichrists have come, by which we know it is the last hour. I don't have details uh, to go over the details, so this is a tutorial. I hope you may read all the verses in details and pray to the Lord and really consider all the verses. Here says the 
Antichrist, the word Christ is the anointed one. In Greek, First John speaks of the anointing, the word Christmas. The anointing, Christmas, is the Spirit, the Spirit Himself. The anointing is of the Spirit. Today we know that we believe in the Lord. We are mingled with the Lord. We are one with Spirit with the Lord. The Holy Spirit of God and our spirit are mingled. And Satan can do nothing else as for that. We are already mingled with the Lord. We are one spirit with the Lord. That's what Satan can do is to try to prevent you and I to use our spirit. That is the point. He knows that you and I, we are one spirit with the Lord, but he wants to make you and I not to use our spirit. That is why it's so important to exercise our spirit. In the day-to-day, -day, the meeting, church meetings, even in pandemics and social isolation, we need to exercise our spirit at home, in our private moment with the Lord, in our fellowship with the Lord, all the time. So, and also, we need to fellowship with the Lord, to be honest with the Lord. We need to go before the Lord, to say to Him, Lord, I'm here. Do not try to pretend before the Lord. To pretend to be something that you're not. Before the saints, maybe you can deceive them. The young ones can deceive their parents and so on, but we cannot deceive the Lord. Let us be honest with the Lord. Lord, I'm here and I need you. Save me, Lord. Save me, Lord. Do not allow this iniquity to reach me. I want to exercise my spirit. Exercise our spirit everywhere. The third thing that Satan does in his plan against us is to remove our daily fellowship with God. Your moment of prayer, you know how prayer today is essential in today's time. This pandemics and the social isolation. Praise the Lord. If you, if we have this prayer watch. If you're not part of it, speak with the saints in the WhatsApp group. They have the schedules every 50 minutes. Choose a moment there of prayer. In a, a moment of 15 minutes for you to pray over all the subjects we already mentioned. That is, Satan wants to make his plans against us and wants to remove the word, neutralize your spirit, and to remove our fellowship with God. And what God wants from you, what God wants is to make us ministers of the new covenant, already mentioned. He does not want something from you. He does not want you just to do something for him, to do work for him. He wants you. He wants you to live for him. Your living is important. He wants us to live the new covenant. You know what is the ministry of the new covenant? I relate the definition in the daily fruit. The ministry of the new covenant, it is the living of the ministry of the new covenant. Let me repeat it. The ministry of the new covenant, it is the living. My living, your living, and my living, and your living. The living of a ministry of the new covenant. So, in our relationship with the Lord, then we have the word triumph. Let me read it with you. Verse 14, 2 Corinthians uh, 2, 14. Th now thanks be to God who always lead us in triumph. Triumph in Christ. This is victory. This is triumph over sin, over the world. Triumph over power. The enemy, the Lord is victorious. Let me read it to you. Revelation 12, verses 10. Revelation chapter chapter 12, verse 10 and 11. Here we, say, we read, And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now salvation and strength in the kingdom of our, and our, of our God and the power of his Christ has come for the accuser of our brethren, who killed them before our day and night has been cast down, and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony and they did not love their lives to the death. And we have that verse that if the heavens will rejoice woe to the earth and the sea for the devil has come down to you having great wrath because he knows that he has a short time. We see the victory of the Lord verses 10 and 9 triumph of the Lord, the overcomers. Especially in verse 11, speaks of, and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives to the death. 
for this is their triumph. The Lord is triumphant. He wants to lead us in His triumph. Today the Lord is speaking to us. He wants you and I to believe in His Word. We need to believe in His Word. This is our attitude to His spoken Word, His written Word. He wants us to believe, to have faith. So in 2 Corinthians 2.14, as we read, what the word triumph, always leading us in triumph, what God wants, what does it mean? What does it want to say to us? It means that when Christ leads us in triumph, it is as if we, we were captive. Not as if we were, but we are captive. So let me explain at that moment what happened. At the time when there were many wars, the Roman Empire against the barbarians, against people, other peoples, when they conquered nations to become the Roman Empire. There were the Roman, Roman generals that went out to war. This Roman triumph was a civil a ritual, a religious ritual. It was a ceremony to uh, pay tribute to the military commander of the, the campaign that he did abroad or the war abroad, that he was victorious. It was a successful battle. When he returned, he displayed the glories of Roman uh, victory. Those who were tributed, receiving this distinction, were called triumphers. The day of triumph, the crown, they use the they use a crown of leaves and they use a robe, a very special robe. These generals were considered as divine. So he, he went on a carriage of four horses and all the people were there claiming. There was a procession. This is the point. This is the context in this verse. The triumphal procession of the Roman general. In, the, the, in this procession, he was when there was his chariot and then the captives and the uh, spoils. Among the captives were the ones who surrendered to the general, the, the general conquered, conquered them and all the... the between the captives, there were those who did not surrender to the general because they lost the war. They were conquered and they came in chains and so on. So there were two categories. Those who surrendered themselves were submissive to the, the, the general. Those who resisted, resisted, but they were defeated anyway. They got to the capital, the temple of Jupiter. Then he offered sacrifices and, and displayed his victory. That was the context, the, the, the background that Paul based on to write this. Today we are those captives. Christ is the victorious general. Wow. In, in the universe there is a triumphal procession. Christ ahead and we are on his back. So everything that we'll be reading now is in this context. So we need to know Christ is the victorious general. So let us read Hebrews 2.14. You can read it later on. There tells us that our beloved Lord Jesus, what did he do? He destroyed the one who has the power of death, the devil. In Revelation 20.10 says that the devil was cast down in the lake of fire. Before you and I were captive of sins of Satan, the world, the old man, the flesh, the old creation, and so on. All of those negative things. But on that cross, Christ overcame everything. He was buried, and he went to Hades, and he rose up, went out from Hades, and ascended to heaven. When he ascended, he took captive. The captivity. We followed him in this triumphal procession, in resurrection. Christ had all the victory. Dear brothers and sisters, it's important to have this living. For a great servant of God, this is in the Daily Food, you can read it in details later. Charles Studd, he said this, a Christian 
has to live in such a way that when he dies, the heavens are in feast and uh, the hell too. Oh, feast in heavens and in hell. In heavens because an overcomer arrived. A man who fulfilled God's plan, who helped to, to carry on God's plan on earth. And then have in, in hell because somebody who disturbed Satan is left. When a man of God is on earth, he deserves the plan of Satan. So the question is, you and I, we didn't die, we're still here, you and I. When Satan look at us, is he happy because we are cooperating with him in his kingdom? Or we're some, someone who disturbs his plan? The victory of Christ is total. In John 19.30, he said, it is finished. So he completed everything. Oh, I'd like to say something about this triumph, which is so, so important in our daily life. When speaking of Christ leads us in triumph, it's a war. But at this moment, the daily fruit tells us, Father Miguel shared with us this message, said that it's a fight not against the world, sin, sin, to Satan, but it's fight, fighting in Christ against you and me. Every day within you, Do, don't you have this conflict within you? The Lord wants one thing, you want something else. Well, there is this struggle between you and the Lord. It is God's will against your will. It is living in the spirit against the living in the soul. It's the enjoyment of the word against the enjoyment of the world. The question is, who is winning this battle? Who is winning? Many times, dear brothers and sisters, you and I lose the battle against the sin of the world. Why? Because we win the battle against Christ. When we, we win the battle against Christ, you lose the battle against sin in the world. We have, if we have problems with the saints, with family, it seems that we can socialize with that unresolved. We just take it on. But when Christ wins this, this battle, we become his captive when we surrender ourselves. We raise our uh, white flag, surrender. What happens? There is this triumph of Christ, and we are part of his triumphal procession. Praise the Lord. Now, one thing that is interesting in this triumphal procession that when the captives followed his victorious general, these captive ones took an incensor to many of them. Then they were spreading that fragrance. Everyone around, they felt that fragrance. You know, dear brothers and sisters, many times we don't see somebody passes on with a perfume, you can smell that. When some, somebody makes a food, you cannot see the food, but especially when they're preparing a barbecue, you smell it. You don't see the meat, but you smell it. So the Bible tells us here that through us he manifests for the fragrance of his knowledge. So we are toward God. We are the, for we are to God the fragrance of Christ among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing. What does that mean? To the one who are realm of death leading to death and to the other the realm of life leading to life. What does that mean? And among the captive ones, there were those who surrendered surrendered to the general. So when they got to the capital, well, after the ceremony, they were spared, became slaves. They were sold as slaves, but they were living. And those who resisted against the general were still defeated. After the ceremony, they were executed. So that a fragrance had a a different meaning for those who surrender themselves. They were like, oh, I will survive after this procession. But for those who resisted, there was another meaning. They smelled that fragrance, they felt we will die. So today, we must have such a life before the Lord, before God. We are, on the one hand, the fragrance of His knowledge, uh, our intimacy with the Lord produces this fragrance that everyone can feel, but also our presence defines the destiny of people. 
Only the fact that you are there, destiny of the people are, are defined. Life or death, you are a fragrance of life to life or from death to death. Final question before we end is, dear brother and dear sister, sister, dear friend, are you a captive who surrendered? If you do not surrender to the Lord Jesus yet, surrender yourself to the Lord, become a captive of Christ. For you who are the Lord, receive the Lord, let us live a life submissive to the Lord. Let us do, give ourselves to the Lord. Let the Lord triumph over us. Let's lose our fight with the Lord and let Him win from us so that we can keep the victory over the world, sin, and so on. Praise the Lord. The fragrance and the aroma, the Greek word, the aroma, it is the aroma that goes up from the sacrifices. Our living is like a living sacrifice. When God smells this aroma, He is pleased. We are this good perfume, good fragrance of Christ. So praise the Lord. The title is Captive and the Perfume of Christ. Let us be captive, surrender ourselves to the Lord. Let the Lord triumph over us every day. And we to be participants of his triumphal procession. We will be victorious in our Christian life. We will also be the good perfume of Christ. May God bless you all. And until next opportunity. Like it. Like this video and make a comment. And subscribe to the channel of the Institute. Like this video. And also leave a comment. What do you enjoyed? How this word blessed you, okay? May God bless you until next opportunity.